We're off course, Captain. Instruments indicate that we have crossed the Klingon neutral zone. Message from the Klingon commander, sir. On screen. Enterprise, you are in violation of Klingon space. Your ship is forfeit. Prepare to die. Raising shields. Arming weapons. No response, sir. Klingons are notoriously ferocious over neutral zone violations, Captain. <laughs> She can't take it, Captain. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Our weapons are offline. Our weapons are offline. Captain, two Elasi frigates are decloaking. In addition to its cloaking capabilities, the lead ship is mounted with three forward firing photon torpedo bays. We are being hailed. On screen. This is Captain Bevanda Zane of the Elasi frigate interdiction. You are no match for our new Storm-class frigates. We demand your immediate surrender. Forget it. Give us five minutes to decide. No matter... Forget it. No matter how good your ships are, they're still being captained by lice-ridden Elasi hypocrites. I would lose all self-respect surrendering to a person like you. This is typical of the twisted rhetoric of the Federation that oppresses the freedom-loving pirates of the Elasi. I shall gladly strike a blow against Federation arrogance and oppression. <laughs> Raising shields. Ship design matches that of the Elasi pirates. Fast, maneuverable, and armed with photon torpedoes. The unidentified ship refuses to respond, sir. Arming weapons. <laughs> USS Alexander. We have returned from the future. In eight days, the United Federation of Planets will be completely destroyed. A new... My God. Captain's log supplemental. We have tracked the Alexander's course to Espoir Station, a scientific research facility in the Omega Maelstrom sector. Does everyone not like me? I don't know, Bones. I guess it's your cheerful nature and your stoic silence.
has decided this is not a spot that he'll visit on his next mission. I hate when they do that. Jim, what's that smell? We're not a gas. A knockout gas with an extremely long effect. We have mere seconds to neutralize it or get out of here. Phaser's on stun. We have nothing to say. If you execute us, the Vardane code requires you to inform our family. The mortuary frequency is bandwidth 54.37 centimeters. Aim your transmission at Mount Arius on Vardane. Failure to comply will result in a blood feud between my family and yours till either has been completely destroyed. A charming culture. <laughs> We have nothing. I hate when they do that. You're too late. I've set the computer on a continuous auto-diagnostic. You'll never be able to get it online. I don't believe in the word never. You won't succeed. You won't succeed. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Transmission detected in secondary corridor. Security forces converge on secondary corridor. There they are! Get them! Fire! You get no response. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Transmission detected in executive quarters. Security forces converge on executive quarters. We're being jammed. We have to disable the station's communication system if we want to contact the Enterprise. You get no response. Surrender or die? Surrender. Or we'll phaser the airlock and we'll all go flying out together. Can I have five minutes to think about it? We surrender. Surrender. Can I have five minutes to think about it? No! Spock fire. Okay, we surrender. Spock fire. <laughs> Surrender or die? Surrender. Or we'll phaser the airlock and we'll all go flying out together. The airlock is closed. You can't phaser it open. Surrender or else. I guess it's or else. Spock fire. <laughs> Surrender or die? Wait, you're supposed to be on our side. Didn't Commander Command talk to you lately? He is a traitor. Our loyalty is to Dr. Bradell. Great. Spock fire. <laughs> Jim, look out! I think that I'm going to do horrible things to your anatomy in the language of the Antarian man-killers. A mutated Antarian man-killer. An improved version of one of the most fierce animals in the galaxy. Fascinating.
Dr. Dell has made it resistant to tissue disruption. Experiment is over, Burdell. Morality transcends the differences. You don't honestly think you can defy the three of us, do you, Bur Everything is already in motion, Kirk. The three of you are irrelevant. Your Starfleet is irrelevant. The universe will be better without you. Better without moralists and meddlers. The vulgar masses that constrain those who transcend them. Have you ever seen Shakespeare's Coriolanus, Kirk? It is his most insightful play. A tale of greatness destroyed by pettiness. It shall not happen this time. Die, Kirk! Die, Kirk! A dartboard. A very good likeness of James T. Kirk is its chief decoration. <laughs> We're off course, Captain. There are Elasi ships closing rapidly. Cloaking. Hmm. This looks interesting. Message from the Elasi Captain, sir. On screen. You shouldn't have come here, Kirk. Now we must destroy you. Raising shields. Arming weapons. No response, sir. Fascinating. Illogical, but fascinating. <laughs> She can't take it, Captain. Aye, sir. Damage control standing by, sir. Game. We're off course, Captain. Instruments indicate that we have crossed the Klingon neutral zone. Message from the Klingon commander, sir. On screen. Enterprise, you are in violation of Klingon space. Your ship is forfeit. Prepare to die. Raising shields. Arming Our weapons are offline. The shields are falling. Our weapons are offline. Load a previously saved game. Captain, Romulans materializing off the port bow. Damage control standing by, sir. Message from the Romulan commander, Captain. On screen. Enterprise, you are in violation of Romulan space. My orders are specific. Unauthorized Federation vessels are to be destroyed. Romulans are notoriously ferocious over neutral zone violations, Captain. No response, sir. Target analysis saw. Target. Take it, Captain. Aye, sir.
It seems that we have chosen incorrectly, Captain. What's the matter, Jim? Been that long since childhood? We used to play this kind of game all the time. No, Bones, it hasn't been that long. I just haven't seen a puzzle quite like this one. I must confess a lack of familiarity with this particular scheme. Vulcan puzzles are more abstract. There were four available shapes that might solve the puzzle. One of the shapes should make all three lines equal in some way. That would seem logical, Captain. Captain, there is another display waiting to be activated. Shall I continue? No, that last puzzle gave me a headache. Absolutely. I'm sure we'll do better this time. No. Sorry, Jim. I'm certain it's psychosomatic. I won't be able to do a thing to help. How unusual, Doctor. Captain, there is another... No, absolutely. I'm sure we'll do better this time. Do we have to, Jim? I hate tests. Activating. Failed again. Why geometrical puzzles? Why not numbers or riddles? Numbers are dependent on a planet's base numerical system. A planet with a base 12 system could not solve the numerical puzzles of a planet with a base 10 system. Idiosyncrasies in dialect and colloquialisms could change the meaning of a language-based puzzle from race to race. So, obviously, whoever created these tests thought that geometric puzzles would be universally understood. That is a reasonable assumption. Geometry? Hey, Jim, all those shapes are polygons. Except the circle, Doctor. Polygons have sides. The circle does not have any edges. Therefore, it can have no sides. Or it has one side if you view it as a single continuous line. Taken simplistically, that might be correct. Though the theory of calculus argues that it has infinite sides. Leave it to a Vulcan to make things difficult again. Not difficult, Doctor. Merely correct. Enough, you two. We need to figure out what to do, not argue. Captain, there is another display waiting to be activated. Shall I continue? No, I need to go back to school and get a nap. Our luck is bound to change, but let's go for it. No, I need to go back to school and get a nap. Sort of redundant, aren't we, Jim? Captain, there isn't... No, our luck is bound to change. Depending on luck may be part of our problem. Activating. Captain, the computer is indicating a security breach just north and east of here. The intruders are moving this way. Scotty, get us out of here fast. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, I've gone over the report. Not only didn't you get information valuable to the Federation, but you also doomed the Balcozi to violent behavior and cut their food supply to boot. Maybe you and your crew have been together a bit too long. I expect better things from you, Captain. You are hereby ordered to return to Starbase 42 for psychological examinations. Mr. Spock, you are now in command until you receive further orders. Load a previously saved game. The repair is complete, Captain. It would now be possible to safely shut this machine down. However, doing so would certainly affect all the other equipment in this complex. Captain, do you wish me to start the shutdown sequence on the generator? Let's hold off. Shut it down, Spock. Let's hold off on that for now, Spock. Shut it down, Spock. What the devil is that? Captain, that energy shield is down. We now have you on sensors. And there's a lot of other life forms approaching you. You started this, Jim. What are you going to do now? Shoot them all? We can start by getting away from that door. Scotty, get us out of here. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, I've gone over the report. Not only didn't you get information valuable to the Federation, but you also doomed the Balcozi to violent behavior and cut their food supply to boot. Maybe you and your crew have been together a bit too long. I expect better things from you, Captain. 
You are hereby ordered to return to Starbase 42 for psychological examinations. Mr. Spock, you are now in command until you receive further orders. Load a previously saved game. Essentially an on-off control device. A huge vat full of pheromone and food-producing bacteria. Assuming the appropriate signal is received, this unit can be shut down safely. The shutdown signal does not originate here. Captain, it would now be possible to safely shut this machine down. Captain, do you wish me to start the shutdown sequence on the generator? Let's hold off on that for now, Spock. Shut it down, Spock. Let's hold off on that for now, Spock. Captain, the generator is now fully functional. Power can be turned off if you wish. Captain, there's a small display active. It appears that this device is a memory unit, an archive. Most amazing. The information is in volatile memory. If power were lost to this device, all information contained within would be lost. An odd way to create an archive. Impressive spot. Captain, I'm not responsible for that occurrence. However, I did discover that accessing the memory will not only trigger the shutdown of this unit, it will also send a signal to another device, most likely one somewhere in this complex. Damaging the unit will also initiate shutdown and signal transmission. There's no way around it? None, Captain. What is this, some kind of idiotic test? Don't fool with that, Spock. You'll poison this planet and make these inhabitants permanently aggressive. Doctor, you do not know for certain that whoever placed the Balcozi here did not intend for that to happen. The aggressiveness may be what they need to develop further. And the information in the archive is a reward for sending the Balcozi into the next stage of their development. You just want to get your Vulcan fingers on that precious scientific information. More like... 30 pieces of silver for condemning the Balkosi to the lives of violence. Jim, you can't let this unfeeling monster do this to the Balkosi. Do you wish me to continue attempting to access the archive, Captain? Yes, Buck. That information could be critical to the Federation. Let's hold off until we get a little more information. Yes, Buck. I have the data, Captain. The archive is now empty and has sent its signal. I'm not happy about this, Jim. I think we're dooming the Balcosi to eternal strife, not to mention what it's doing to us. Spock may have had it right. This might have been the plan all along. Someone obviously set all this up. Would they possibly put the Balcosi in a position to be negatively affected? Captain, the energy field has dropped enough for us to communicate with the Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Scotty, are you there? Captain Kirk, good to hear your voice. And you're Scotty. Three to beam up. Chekhov, set phasers on widest possible setting. We need to sterilize the atmosphere near that complex. We must wipe out that bacteria. Aye, Captain. Captain, as we surmised on the planet, there are more bacteria-producing locations. Sensors indicate several similar geysers of material being ejected into the atmosphere from various locations on the planet. My calculations are that we cannot destroy enough of the bacteria to stop it from invading the ecosystem. Captain, the Balkosi will be permanently subjected to the pheromone. Jim, I've gone over the report. You have doomed the Balkosi to violent behavior and cut their food supply to boot. Jim, with all your years of service, you should know that no information, no matter how revolutionary, is worth condemning an entire civilization. Maybe you and your crew have been together a bit too long. I expect better things from you, Captain. You are hereby ordered to return to Starbase 42 for re-evaluation of your fitness for command. 
Mr. Spock, you are now in command. Until you receive further orders. Load a previously saved game. You cover the straw with schnapps. What's going on here? We should leave this building immediately. The proximity of this fire to a large concentration of alcohol puts us at considerable risk. A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is nailed shut. This seems pointless. Don't do anything foolish. Don't be a fool. Do you think the Baron cares if you burn to death? Who is this Baron? Trelane? Don't be a fool, man. If you keep us in here, you'll die too. It depends on whether he likes his prisoners rare, medium, or well done. American humor leaves me cold, Kirk. It looks rather warm to me. If we stick around, it'll get even warmer. What does Trelane want with us? I'm not interested in your opinion. Where's Trelane? It looks rather warm to me. If we stick around, it'll... What does Trelane want with us? Be patient, Kirk. The noble Baron of Gothos shall reveal all in good time. Of course, if we burn to death, he won't have a chance to gloat. Trelane, noble? That pompous egomaniac. I'm not interested in your opinion. Where's Trelane? In his castle. But it will not be easy to see him, Kirk. He is a very busy man. The guard says nothing, but he stares intensely at you as the rising flames are reflected in his eyes. I thought that was my job. This guard looks like he wants you to give him an excuse to shoot. Load a previously saved game. Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? Your emergency beacon and statement lead me to believe you see more of an emergency than exists here. So when do the wicked witches and goblins show up? That's telling him, Captain. Such contempt is undeserved. You must already serve the others. I am reactivating Visner, Captain. Greetings, I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. So when do the wicked witches and goblins show up? Captain, I have a message from deep space. I'm not certain who it's from, but it says, your insolence greatly disappoints us. We ask you to leave our planet. You can tell him it's not much of a planet, Lieutenant. This was not a logical approach, Captain. I find no rationality in your discourse. I do not think Starfleet will approve of your actions. I didn't like the looks of that Visner anyway. Kirk to Enterprise, four to beam up. Well, what happened? Captain, I have observed that many creatures in the galaxy prefer to be treated with respect. Your word choices will not go down in the history of diplomacy. Captain, I've received another message. It says that an opportunity to redeem yourself will be given. Do not waste it. Brassica out. Brassica? Is that a person's name or the name of a race? Perhaps it's the name of a ship. Captain, message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. If I were you, I'd do some serious soul-searching about my command ability. I would expect as much from a cadet, but from Starfleet's finest. I'm going to have to forward my concerns to command. Kane out. Logic suggests that we will eventually discover the true identity of the Brassica. Agreed, Mrs. Spock. I think we've spent enough time on Onias. Ahead to our next destination, Mr. Sulu. Warp Factor 2. Aye, sir. Warp Factor 2. Load a previously saved game. So where's the emergency? Greetings, I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? All right, I know you're just a projection. Let's speak with your real masters. Such language indicates an unwillingness to compromise. You must already serve the others.
I will now reactivate Asheron, Captain. So where's the emergency? All right, I know you're just a projection. Let's speak with your real masters. Captain, I have a message from Deep Space. I'm not certain who it's from, but it says, Your insolence greatly disappoints us. We ask you to leave our planet. You can tell them it's not much of a planet, Lieutenant. This was not a logical approach, Captain. I find no rationality in your discourse. I do not think Starfleet will approve of your actions. I didn't like the looks of that Azra anyway. Kirk to Enterprise, four to beam up. Well, what happened? Captain, I have observed that many creatures in the galaxy prefer to be treated with respect. Your word choices will not go down in the history of diplomacy. Captain, I've received another message. It says that an opportunity to redeem yourself will be given. Do not waste it. Brassica out. Brassica? Is that a person's name or the name of a race? Perhaps it's the name of a ship. Captain, message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. If I were you, I'd do some serious soul-searching about my command ability. I would expect as much from a cadet, but from Starfleet's finest. I'm going to have to forward my concerns to command. Kane out. Logic suggests that we will eventually discover the true identity of the Brassica. Agreed, Mrs. Bug. I think we spent enough time on Onias. Ahead to our next destination, Mr. Sulu. Warp Factor 2. Aye, sir. Warp Factor 2. Load a previously saved game. Jim, no, don't! What happened? Did we... Captain, message incoming from Starfleet. On screen. Captain. We've just received a transmission from an advanced alien race showing us your actions on Onius 2. They told us that they've lost all interest in communicating with the Federation because of them. Kirk, I am removing you from command. Captain Spock, you ought to take the Enterprise to Starbase 6 where an inquiry into the actions of its former commander will convene. Admiral. That's an order, Captain Spock. Yes, Admiral. Richards, out. I'll pray for you, sir. Captain, message from Starfleet. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. If I were you, I'd do some serious soul-searching about my command ability. I would expect as much from a cadet, but from Starfleet's finest. I'm going to have to forward my concerns to command. Kane out. Mr. Sulu, set course for Starbase 6, Warp Factor 3. Aye, sir. Course laid in Warp Factor 3. Load a previously saved game. Jim, no, don't! What happened? Did we... Captain, message incoming from Starfleet. Jim, no, don't! What happened? Did we... Captain, message incoming from Starfleet. On screen. I'll get them, Captain. Walker, wait. Walker! Captain, he is in no condition to talk. Angus Walker has had better days. A lot better days. Captain, we're going to need more than a med kit to help him. It's very serious, Captain. He's still alive, but he's in shock, almost catatonic. We need to get him to sickbay as soon as possible. Avurian, the alien doesn't appear to be noticing you. You already stunned the alien, Captain. Murderers! Load a previously saved game. Disturb my rest. 
Unfortunately, I am not alone in bliss. Do not use such a tactic again on me. I warn you. What is this? What am I feeling? What have you done? What's the matter, Savant? Not feeling those good vibrations? Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality check. Is that sadness you're feeling, Savant? It couldn't be that those inferior humans have outwitted your great wisdom, could it? All I sought was the best for them. Why are you tormenting me? To get you to listen. To force you to respect other people. Free Spock! And return us to our ship, and the torment will end. The best? You're a selfish, self-centered nothing. Eternal bliss? You're an emotional leech that has to use others to give you joy because you're too emotionally stunted to stand on your own two feet. If I cannot cherish the happiness that I have spent eons pursuing, then I shall belong to oblivion. Captain, without the Savant, the fabric of this universe will... Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. There they are! Shoot them! Load a previously saved game. Grinagog watches everything, eyes shining brightly. His legs are pulled up off the floor and he hugs his knees. An enormous grin never leaves his face. His mental activity is very high, but doesn't seem pathologic, Jim. Respiratory activity indicates a high degree of anxiety by comparison with others of his race. Now that much stress is unhealthy if this is a chronic state. Still frothing at the mouth, a combination of terror and anger is etched on his face. He's unconscious, breathing shallow, and very mild shock. He'll recover, though. I think you've caused enough trouble doing that, Jim. This man is in no shape to converse. Let him be. You've done enough harm. He will recover on his own. Get away from my table! You'll get it dirty! A prepackaged meal. I do not wish to share food with humans or Vulcans. Especially that food. Do you think I am a fool? Get away from me with that thing! Captain, I must protest. That hardly seems necessary. Isn't it enough that I betrayed Tuscan for you? Rackaback falls, defenseless against the power of the phaser. An inelegant solution, Captain Kerr, but efficient. Gormagon falls, defenseless against the power of the phaser. Inelegant, Captain Kirk, and perhaps unnecessary. I feel that a less brutal approach overall might have produced much better results. This should wake him up. 
I feel more confident medicating this individual than anyone else I've seen on the ship. Thank you for bringing me around. Despite it all, I'm not sure what to think of you. I just don't know if I should trust you. Well, Gorvagon, I think you should trust them. They've repaired the garden, which is good for all of us. They gave fresh fruit to my boy Stan Bob, when even his own mother couldn't manage that. I overheard what you said, Gormagon. <laughs> they hurt me! I, I don't even want to stay around here, but, but, but I thought you'd want to know. Gormagon, what I've seen of them, if you trust weasels like this, you are certifiably mad. Not that that would make you any different from the rest of your lunatic fellows. I think my decision is made. You are not to be trusted to act honorably or well. You hurt people. Go away. I don't want to hurt you, but I don't want you around either. I listened to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. Gormagon Falls defenseless against the power of the phaser. An elegant Captain Kirk. No, I don't think... I will attempt a mind meld if you wish, Captain. A brain rape would probably be a better description, wouldn't it? In this instance, I must agree with my aide, Captain Kirk. My impression of this individual whose brain you propose to invade is that he would be helpful, even cooperative if you were to win his trust. And then all you would have to do is ask. But of course, You've rendered him unconscious, and that is certainly an inconvenience. I do not believe that we have many choices left, Captain Klar, if we are to discover what is wrong with the ship and prevent it from landing on Atavis. I believe Gormagan knows the secret way into the computer control room, and we must enter it if we are to save thousands, perhaps millions of lives. In other words, you've made mistakes, and now the ends must justify the means, and all your sanctimonious self-righteousness is so much hot air. By all means, Mr. Spock, proceed. Your captain has given you orders. Gormagon possesses the innate talent to restrict mind-to-mind -mind communication. I think it is based in an irrational fear fueled by association with Tuscan. Although there is a genetic component as well. The mind meld technique is not invasive, yet it can be informative. I worked just enough to locate the door we seek. It opens thus. It's too bad Gormagon doesn't trust us. But frankly, I don't know that I blame him. Under the circumstances, I feel badly that Gormagon doesn't trust us. I don't know what else we could do about that. I am feeling a little down, Captain Kirk. But don't bother about me, I'll be all right. Having failed to establish ourselves as worthy of Gormagon's trust, I fear that more drastic measures will be required. Forgive the pause. I had to think long and hard to discover if you had correctly passed this final test. You correctly identify the heart of the matter. Let me introduce you to my builders. This is madness. Faiz, what is this? You seem a violent people. Captain, our phasers. They're gone. Despite our misgivings, you have shown yourselves to be the representatives of spacefaring peoples we, the Brassica, would most trust to make first contact with. The contest has been in progress for some time, situations in which your true colors have been explored. The invitation has been made. You may return to your ship if you prefer, or you may step through whenever you are ready. Then, the final round begins. I think you have it right, Captain Clark. This is madness, Jim. I think, Bones, it's Shakespeare who had it right. Though this be madness, Yet there is a method in it. I agree with the sentiment, Captain Kirk. There is something more going on here, far deeper than first appearances have suggested. I imagine you will accept the invitation. I will certainly choose to go, whether you do or not. 
I believe the invitation is extended to all. I will not permit that, Captain Clark. I will take all methods to prevent you. I will not go. It is certainly a Federation trick. You begin to sound like Tuscan in the other room. Get a grip of yourself and act like an officer. Nothing to report, Captain. Captain Clark, I will not let you depart. These human scum have tricked you. If I have to beat up all of you, I will. You, Vulcan, you understand orders. Help me knock out my mad captain, and I will take him away and out of your hair. The Klingon captain roars with fury but swiftly sinks to his knees. The aide looks and nods approvingly, with a nasty grin twisting his face. I could see he was going too far in his tolerance. You've made it easier for me to get him back aboard the Pal Yar, where I can initiate a court of inquiry. Load a previously saved game. You, Vulcan, you understand orders. Help me knock out my mad captain, and I will take him away and out of your hair. Startled, the Klingon's eyes glaze even as he glares furiously, struggling to remain conscious. Captain, I told you they couldn't be trusted. I'll send you back aboard, Ron. But unless the humans betray me, I have to pass through that portal to explore what lies beyond. The Klingon captain roars with fury but swiftly sinks to his knees. Before he falls unconscious, Klar manages to signal his ship to transport him back. In a wink of transportation, he is gone. Message from Pau Yar, Captain. Captain Kirk, your unprovoked aggression will be reported to the Klingon High Command. Be warned that your actions will hold you accountable for starting interstellar war. Load a previously saved game. Captain's log, stardate 6269.3. The landing party and the Klingon Captain Clark have passed through a portal in time and space. We're about to face tests by the Brassica. Success will mean formal relations. Failure will mean... unknown. Welcome. We applaud your willingness to confront the unknown. Please tell us what's going on. Where are we? Patience. I cannot answer all yet. Those elements of our society still ill at ease with your cultures have more questions. We've had enough. No more foolish tests. Before we share, we will satisfy ourselves of who and what you are. The Brassica choose not to complete contact until certain. We seek out new life and new civilizations. If that means more tests, we will do them. Your attitude doesn't impress me. Send us home. We seek out. Your attitude doesn't impress me. Send us home. Your attitude does not credit you. Depart. We shall not contact you for some time. What's that supposed to mean? I guess it means we'll all look back on this as a mistake. True, Dr. McCoy. I believe our peoples will come together in the future. But now is not the future. Captain's log, stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. They did display considerable anger, Captain. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jen, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you've done as well as you have. We found numerous lapses of judgment. I expected better. Yes, Admiral. When this mission is over, we should schedule some time for a refresher course. The Academy Simulator isn't just for cadets, you know. I agree, Admiral. 
That's all, Jim. Starfleet out. I wonder what he'd say if he were in the command chair. He's right, Bones. The moment Starfleet standards start to slip is the moment the Federation is in trouble. Agreed, Captain. Triumphs achieved without an adequate standard are hollow and meaningless. I suppose we could have done better. And we shall, Bones. We shall. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. Where's he gone? The next question awaits, Captain. You are nothing like the Gerund. You hold a special place in our memories. The second question. Who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Talk amongst yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. In the end, only one reply. We are ready with our answer now. We have questions. Very well. Ask. What have you done with Lieutenant Uhura? I demand an explanation. We will not discuss this. Then this encounter is over. You've given me no reason to trust you. I won't sit by and let you spirit my people away. I don't like it, but I'll take it for now. I'll expect an explanation before this is over. Then this encounter is over. We have not given you reason to distrust us either. The time is not right for our species to meet. Those who are missing will be returned, and you may continue about your business. What's that supposed to mean? I guess it means we'll all look back on this as a mistake. True, Dr. McCoy. I believe our peoples will come together in the future. But now is not the future. Captain's log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. Would you please repeat the question? Certainly, Captain. The question I asked was, who among you may go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life? Is there anything else? We have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. My people engender a philosophy of reverence to life in all its myriad forms. My personal adherence to that philosophy is complete. I believe it is I whom you seek. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. Where is he gone? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. You are nothing like the Gerund, who hold a special place in our memories. The second question, who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Talk amongst yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. In the end, only one may reply. I think you'll want to discuss this, and then you may address me again when you are better prepared to answer. I am captain of a starship in command of a ship exploring the edges of the galaxy and at times beyond. Without a strong leader, shipboard activities would lose direction and dissolve into chaos. I believe my actions are those of one wrestling most intensely with the chaos of life central to the lives of those around you, Captain Kirk. There are many sacrifices you make, but your responsibilities preclude you from being the one to rightly answer this question. In fact, this answer is the most telling to us. You would take responsibilities not properly yours, and if you, the leader, cannot distinguish between what is yours and what is properly another's, the meeting of our two races must wait. You will all be safely returned to your own people. Farewell, until our peoples meet again. What's that supposed to mean? I guess it means we'll all look back on this as a mistake. 
true, Dr. McCoy. I believe our peoples will come together in the future. But now is not the future. Captain's log, stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. The question I asked you was to solve this equation. Pig plus X equals cow. Have you others? We are ready with our answer now. Let the one who would answer be the next to speak. The correct answer solves for X. In all the different questions, the answer is egg. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerent. The last question, answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Discuss this. I will answer questions if I can and will. You might want to discuss this with me to explore your options. Lacking any discussion with Captain Kirk, I can only assume his failure to step forward here indicates he believes I should justify myself as being the one to leave this room. While I believe he is better fit to pursue negotiations with an alien race like the Brassica, Neither would I contemplate risking myself without purpose. Therefore, since I cannot remain, I will proceed. Your answer is not accepted. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice, as it combines with the qualities of leadership. Certainly not in any manner which gives meaning to those traits. While my companions believed in you, I knew it would come to this all along. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's log, stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. I'm captain of the Enterprise, and this is a member of my crew. It is not even a matter of discussion of who should proceed or who should stay behind. It pains me enormously to forsake any member of my crew, but if only one of us can proceed, then it has to be me. I can't think of any better person to continue this mission than the one standing here with me. My decision as captain is that my crew member should be the one to proceed onward. You want me to choose one of us or the other. Well, frankly, I don't want to risk either of us. I want another alternative. Another choice. It pains me enormously. I can't think of any. You are the leader, Captain Kirk. Asking another to undertake fulfillment of your responsibilities indicates to us that you, as a leader, cannot distinguish between what is yours and what is properly another's. The meeting of our two races must necessarily await another time. You will all be safely returned to your own people. Farewell, until our peoples meet again. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's log, stardate six. Well, please, patient. We've had enough. I'd like to hear what the others think. I will withdraw until you address me again. Captain, I believe the Klingon has a legitimate right to be present. Are you certain you wish him unconscious? Spock, not so loud. You're right, Spock. I don't know what came over me. Spock, not so loud. We need to deal with the Brassica without Klingon interference. Do it. Do 
not be alarmed. Captain Klar is safe. Captain, even though isolated, the Brassica are quite advanced. The question I heard was, chicken plus X equals reality. This question is nonsensical, as is Captain Kirk's. Therefore, I deduce the answer is that there is no answer. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerent. The last question, why should you be allowed to leave this place alive? Take all the time you want, Captain. I will answer questions if I can. I need to push the Brassica to find the limits, or I'll wind up spending time talking to myself. As the only individual here, why should you be allowed to leave this place alive? You seem to be ethical sentience, with as great a stake in the success of my mission, which is to reach an accommodation with you as I have. Therefore, although you may test me and judge me, you will not overtly and directly prevent me from continuing through to the end. Each and every individual of every race in the galaxy is a unique entity and therefore irreplaceable. As an individual yourself, you should seek my preservation rather than my destruction, even as you would seek sympathy and forbearance from me if the situation were reversed. I don't know of any sentient race which does not value new knowledge. Curiosity is at the heart of being sentient. I represent a unique opportunity for you to learn, to explore, to improve yourselves by giving me the chance to introduce myself, my people, my technology, my society to you. If I don't leave here, the promise of that new knowledge cannot be fulfilled. I'll say this, Brassican, you don't... I'll answer this in a hypothetical. If you were here and I was there, wouldn't you have good reasons to justify your leaving this place alive? The same reasons that work for you apply to me. You must know for yourself what those reasons would be. I want to stop this discussion for now and think things over. You seem to be... E I don't... I'll say this, Brassican. You don't want to prevent me from leaving here alive. You're smarter than that. Starfleet wouldn't take my disappearance lightly, and neither would the Federation itself. I reiterate that we are on a peaceful mission, a mission of exploration and discovery. But we are prepared to take strong measures to protect ourselves. Captain Kirk, I'm astonished at you. Are you threatening us? Absolutely not. You should understand the possible consequences, but that certainly doesn't mean the worst case has to occur. In fact, you have complete control over the worst case because we're not going to throw the first punch. You have my word on that. But if I don't return, you have shown an extreme level of xenophobia. Paradoxically, combined with efforts to contact the outside with us. When extremes are combined, the results can be unpredictable, even explosive. Your question implies that I could be killed and you think I should be justifying my statement. I think the question answers itself on the face of it. Take it any way you like. Is that your answer? Or would you prefer to discuss other possibilities? That is my answer. Take it or leave it. I want to discuss other possibilities. That is my answer. Take it or leave it. We may seem a timid race, Captain Kirk, yet we do not lack self-respect. For you to decide that we would passively tolerate such threats is the mark of a bully. It's clear you don't understand us, Captain. And obviously our two races cannot come to any meeting of the minds at this time. I expected this, even if my colleagues did not. You will, however, be glad to know you may leave here alive. You shall be safely returned to your ship. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future.
Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The last question. Answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? No effect. You can't insult me and get away with it, Klingon. Enough, Kirk. You win. We've come this far. Maybe I have a solution now. Go ahead, Clar. I'm listening. Forget it, Clar. I have my own ideas. Go ahead, Clar. I'm listening. Forget it, Clar, I have my own ideas. Intriguing question, Kirk. Two captains representing empires at odds with each other. The Federation is no empire, Clar, and the Organian Treaty assures we are not at each other's throat. Be honest. There are many differences between us. I wish to hear your analysis before I offer my own thoughts. I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. I'm having second thoughts, and I want to go over my ideas with you again. I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. It's simple, Kirk. You go, or I go. A third option would be nice, but unlikely. You get no... Intriguing quest. The Federation... Be on... I'd hoped you'd thought... I'm having second thoughts, and I want to go over my ideas with you again. You go, or I go, Kirk. Have you a better idea? Since I represent the peaceful and unified Federation, I'm the only one possible answer. We would share the Braska knowledge, even with the Klingons, but I doubt the reverse would be true. This is best for everyone. I might surprise you, Clar. I believe the Braska will come to us in time. The Klingons need the civilizing influence they offer, and you're the best representative. I'll bow out, and you proceed. I don't like the choices. I want another alternative, but I'm not sure there is one. Since I represent the people- Your arrogance is without limits, Kirk! Don't assume. I will not let you casually throw away my life. Do we really have anything to discuss, Captain? You seem to have made your decision already. I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. I'm having second... I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. It's simple, Kirk. I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. I'm having second thoughts, and I want to go over my ideas with you. You go or I go, Kirk. Have you a better idea? Since I rep... I might surprise you, Clark. I don't believe you, Kirk. You're no martyr. Kirk, you're a warrior, or am I wrong? Are you too soft to rise to an honest challenge? I can't have you interfering when I answer the Brassica, so I have to take you out of the picture permanently. I've been aching to take a piece out of you, Clar. I think this is as good a time as any. I can't have you interfering when I answer the Brassica, so I have to take you out of the picture permanently. No! I will not allow my mission to be so casually dismissed! I do not agree to this! You behave no better than I expected of your species, Captain Kirk. I knew it would come to this. Our peoples are not ready to interact with the likes of you. Although I think the galaxy would be safer without you, you will be safely returned to your own people. Farewell. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. Captain Kirk has chosen not to discuss his opinions, so I must assume his failure to step forward here indicates he has no objection that I should justify myself as being the one to leave here. I hereby do so for the future of the Klingon Empire. I will be the one to proceed. Your answer is not accepted. 
You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice as it combines with the qualities of leadership. Certainly not in any manner which gives meaning to those traits. While my companions believed in you, I knew it would come to this all along. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. They did display considerable anger, Captain. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Well done, Kirk. Keep up the good work. I must say, however, your performance is not what we've come to expect from James T. Kirk. I guess we all have our off days, Captain. Kane out. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I've made the decision unilaterally without consulting Captain Clark in this matter. Don't assume you can answer with easy impunity, Captain Kirk. I will not stand here and let you casually throw away my life. Please state your position, Captain Kirk. My decision is obvious. There's no question that I, representing the peaceful and unified Federation, am the only one who should continue. I expect this answer will surprise Captain Clark, but I am willing to step aside here. I know the Brassica will seek out the Federation in good time, even if it doesn't happen right now. The Klingons need the civilizing influence which the Brassica offer, and I think Captain Clark has shown himself to be the best possible representative. Let him proceed. You want me to choose one of us or the other to proceed? Well, frankly, I don't think it's right to put either of us at risk. We're both starship captains, both legitimate representatives of millions of inhabitants on thousands of planets. I want another alternative, another choice. My decision is obvious. I expect this answer will... Your answer is not accepted. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice, as it combines with the qualities of leadership. Certainly not in any manner which gives meaning to those traits. While my companions believed in you, I knew it would come to this all along. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. My decision is obvious. There's no question that- No! I will not allow my mission to be so casually dismissed! I do not agree to this! You behave no better than I expected of your species, Captain Kirk. I knew it would come to this. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. You behave no better than I expected of your species, Captain Kirk. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. I do not believe Starfleet will look favorably upon this report. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Kirk! You backstabbing! You behave no better than I expected of your species, Captain Kirk. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future.
Captain's log, star date 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My conflict with the Klingon Captain Klar was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. I do not believe Starfleet will look favorably upon this report. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's get this over with. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. While you achieved the desired results from your assignment, Jim, I can only give you a satisfactory rating. I would expect as much from a cadet. I am concerned about your performance, and I'm going to have to forward my concerns to command. Kane out. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you've done as well as you have. I don't like the choices. I want another alternative, but I'm not sure there is one. I feel the same, Kirk. I have a thought about how we might deal with the question. Go ahead, Clar. I'm listening. They're asking us to choose one to proceed and one to remain. That's the implication of death for the one who remains. I concur. They want an answer that either I live and you die, or you live and I die. I say we answer, we both live or both die. Good concept. What if they refuse? We choose it, whether they offer or not. And if it's not the answer I give? We shall see, won't we? Neither I nor Kirk find this acceptable. We are not even willing allies, but I will not abandon one who has come so far by my side. Captain Klar, you have stepped forward to make your choice, and that choice is very simple. I make it simpler by allowing you to respond as follows. I proceed from this room alone. Captain Kirk may be allowed to proceed from this room alone. We both proceed from this room, or neither of us does. I proceed from this room alone. If it must be one of us or the other, then I must choose for the future of my people. I will be the one to proceed. Your answer is not accepted. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice as it combines with the qualities of leadership. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. Captain's log, stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. They did display considerable anger, Captain. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Captain Kirk may be allowed to proceed from this room alone. To choose between the two of us to allow only Captain Kirk to establish contact is unacceptable. But I think there is a trick here. Therefore I say, let Captain Kirk be the one to leave, and I will remain in the hope and expectation that you will turn the tables so that my mission as a Klingon starship captain can proceed. Your answer is not accepted. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice as it combines with the qualities of leadership. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. Captain's log, stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. They did display considerable anger, Captain. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Well done, Kirk. Keep up the good work. I must say, however, your performance is not what we've come to expect from James T. Kirk. I guess we all have our off days, Captain. Kane out. You want me to choose one of us or the other to proceed? Well, frankly, I don't think it's right to put either of us at risk. We're both starship captains, both legitimate representatives of millions of inhabitants on thousands of planets. I want another alternative, another choice. Captain Kirk, 
You have stepped forward to make your choice, and that choice is very simple. I proceed from this room alone. Allow Captain Clark to proceed from this room alone. We both proceed from this room, or neither of us does. Allow Captain Clark to proceed from this room alone. I expect this answer will surprise Captain Clark, but I am willing to step aside here. Your answer is not accepted. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice as it combines with the qualities of leadership. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. My decision is obvious. There's no question that I, representing the peaceful and unified Federation, am the only one who should continue. No! I will not allow my mission to be so casually dismissed! I do not agree to this! You behave no better than I expected of your species, Captain Kirk. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. You and I have not always seen eye to eye, Kirk. But you would be a fool to die. Now that we've nearly achieved our final goals. Enough, Clark. Come on. Sorry, Clark. Don't know what came over me. Enough, Clark. Come on. Captain Kirk, you and your crew must leave immediately. We must reconsider our earlier decision. What did I do? You attacked someone who has been your associate. The Brassica are not interested in having anything further to do with your race. Goodbye, Captain Kirk. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My conflict with the Klingon Captain Klar was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. I do not believe Starfleet will look favorably upon this report. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's get this over with. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jen, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you... Yes, Admiral. When this mission is over... I agree. That's all. I wonder what he... He's right. Agreed. I suppose. And we should... that Septi gave you, yes. We'll have to upload the technology of how to build a reader terminal. Captain Kirk, show that to me! I insist! What the? What are you talking about, Clar? All right, Clar, here, take a look. This is none of your concern, Clar. I'll show it to you when I'm good and ready. What the? What are you talking about, Clar? I'm not stupid, Kirk! Show me, or I'll come over and look for myself! All right, Clar, here, take a look. Forget it, Clar. I had not thought you were a fool, Kirk, until now. Captain Kirk, you and your crew must leave immediately. We must reconsider our earlier decision. I'm only going to do what I had to, Zenti. It was Captain Clark who jumped me, not the other way around. That will be taken into account, Captain. For the immediate future, our association with your people will remain in effect. Maybe not as wholehearted as it might have been. Let me leave you with this. Individuals among us act as individuals for good and for ill. But overall, the different races of the Federation are joined in a mutual respect that overcomes differences. 
I think you will be pleased with us. I think I can already see that, Captain Kirk. Farewell. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. Captain Kirk, you and your crew must leave immediately. We must reconsider our earlier decision. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. Your crew must leave immediately. We must reconsider our earlier decision. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. Captain's Log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My conflict with the Klingon Captain Klar was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. I do not believe Starfleet will look favorably upon this report. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's get this over with. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more out of you than that. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jen, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you... Yes, Admiral. When this mission is over... I agree. That's all. I wonder what he... He's right. Agreed. I suppose. And we should...